Hello and welcome. Today we've got something up there for you. So sit down, take a look, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to another Ask Kev Anything. The show where you, the fans, the watchers, ask me the questions. So sit down, stick around, and enjoy. So let's get this train wreck of entertainment rolling with the first question here. The question is from Adam, and he asks, I have a question I'm hoping you will be able to help me with because you also live in Canada. A fellow Canuck awesome. And you also order figures online. I'm just wondering how exactly I'm supposed to receive a package after I order it. Am I going to have to be at home to receive it and sign to show that I got it? And if I don't, I'll have to pick it up at the post office? Will it be charged from additional Canadian taxes or fees once I get it? And have you ever had any trouble shipping anything to Canada? I guess that's more than one question, but even if you don't answer, thanks for your attention and thanks for the sweet entertainment, Adam. Well, Adam, this is basically how it works. Um, if you order a package from Canada, and you live in Canada, you order from a Canadian online toy store, such as maybe uh, Automaton Toys, plug, um, you'll see that basically they charge the sales tax in their province whatever it is when you actually buy the item, it's up to them to do so. You don't have any, you don't have to pay, if it gets to your door, you're not going to pay sales tax on it. They have to charge that before it actually leaves the province in which uh, you're buying the item from. And basically it comes to your door and maybe the mailman will come to your door with a box, knock, so you're not there. He'll leave a little ticket kind of thing. It's kind of like a ticket with a hole in it to put on your doorknob or some people put in their mailbox or whatever. Basically giving you a number and saying go pick this up at X location, which is usually a post office or a postal outlet. So you go there with a the little page thingy, you say, here you go, I want my stuff. And then they're like, here you go, take your stuff home. So uh, there's no additional fees, there's no duty fees if that's what you are worrying about, custom fees, brokerage fees. None of those because the item is not coming from the United States. If the item were be coming from the United States, you'd be subject to paying customs on it, just as if you were, if you'd be in the United States and driving back home, crossing the border, they're going to ding you for a certain percentage of whatever amount of stuff you bought. If you're buying from Canada, you're fine. You pay the price you pay online, pay the shipping, and that's it. It comes to you, it gets to you one way or another, and you don't pay anything additional once it gets to your door. From such toy services like Automaton Toys. Alright, next question. This is from Gambito, Gam which is probably a play off of Gambit. Gambito. I'm Gambito. The younger brother of Gambit. Anyways, he writes, please, please, please five, find something else to rant on like you did with Spider-Man's new beginning, brand new day, and one more day. It was funny to me, and it or any gave out some funny thoughts too about anything that you didn't like. Laugh out loud, keep it up man, you're a funny guy when you're mad about comics. And um, to force me to do a rant, I can't really do that. Because when I do a rant, it's not a knack. It's not a character coming here, you know, in front of the camera and saying, you know, well, I'm going to act like I'm pissed off after this particular thing. In order to get views and ha ha ha, you know what I mean? When I'm legit, when I'm pissed off in a video, like the brand new day videos and that, and Spider-Man 3 toys and stuff like that, I'm legitimately upset. It's not an act. It's not me trying to uh, take my persona and multiply it. That's pretty much how I am in real life. If I rant about something, and you, like, you know you know me, you're one of my friends, they'll attest to this, I get pretty emotional and I get, you know, just downright brutal if I hate something. So, I mean, that's what it is. So it's not really an act, so it's hard for me to say, you know, rant about something else, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna purposely purposely review stuff that I don't really like uh, in order to go that route, you know, because I could sit here, you know, and just, you know, rant about stuff like Pokemon and, you know, and those things that basically, you know, 
killed animation in my opinion. I don't want to rant about that stuff. Um, if ever it has to do with something I like and then they do it wrong, then uh, yes, then you'll probably see another rant in the future. So keep watching. Next question is from Idrid, and he writes, your videos rock. Man, thank you. He says, you say that you are an 80s buff. Did you see like Ferris Bueller's Day Off? And if you've seen or like it, why or why not? Did you like it or not like it? Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a staple of 80s comedy. Um, of course I've seen it. Uh, I don't think anybody in my generation hasn't seen the movie. Uh, did I like it? Of course I did. Why did I like it? Because going through a day like that, seriously, it's almost inconceivable. I don't think it can happen. If it could though, it would fucking rock. It'd be awesome to have an adventure like Ferris did. When Ferris did that day, I'll always remember it. Always remember what Ferris did. Ferris! Ferris! Why'd you, why'd you back out the car, man? You fucked up the car. But no, seriously, uh, very good movie. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about it. If you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off yet, if you're from the generation after me, generation born like in the 90s and whatnot, or late 80s or something like that, uh, go on and rent it. It's a classic. It is a classic. And it features probably one of all, one of Matthew Broderick's only roles that I actually liked. Um, yeah, sorry Matthew, the rest of your stuff was in great A. Next question. It's from Jay. And he writes, Love your videos. Your reviews of Watchmen and The Long Halloween influenced me to purchase both and I love them. My question is, do you think The Dark Knight was the greatest comic book movie ever? If not, what was? Now, I know by saying this, and I've said this before, this is where I'm going to get the flames, you know, and the people like, Aah! the trolls are going to come out of fucking cameras and shit, you know, trying to get a piece of decomposed for this. You know what I mean? But I don't find that Batman The Dark Knight is the greatest comic book movie ever. I don't. I don't find that it is. It's probably number two. In my opinion, but it's not number one. Not in my opinion, anyway. I mean, we all have our opinions. My favorite, my personal favorite comic book movie of all time is Spider-Man 2. That's the one that I enjoy the most. It's the one that when I saw, it conveyed the most emotions for me. I'm like going from, you know, it's like kind of like saddish to happy to feeling like, holy shit, what's happening? Like, whoa, this is heavy. Um, it just, it just is, and uh, not that I didn't get those emotions from Batman, uh, The Dark Knight, don't get me wrong, the movie was very, very good. Uh, I still attest, though, that the movie might not have been as big if, uh, if uh, Heath wouldn't have passed away, and uh, you can scold me all you want, or you can troll rock me all you want for that one, but seriously, this movie would not have gotten the publicity it did if Heath wouldn't have died. And anybody that says differently is just a complete fucking moron. Because that's just what it is. Not that I'm saying he didn't do a good role, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the the money it made and all that, people went to see this movie, not only for the fact it was a Batman movie, and Batman Begins was good, you know, and this was good too, is the, the, simple, the fact is some people went to go see this, some Hollywood people, some some snub, nose in the air, I don't give a shit about comics, I don't give a shit about action. Went to go see this movie to see Heath Ledger's last performance. And that that's it. That's plain and simple. It's what it is. And like I said, stone me all you want, uh, you little trolls out there. It, it, it is what it is. And that's what it is. Uh, in my opinion, Aaron Eckhart did a marvelous role in the movie and you don't really hear about that at all and I find that's a shame. Aaron did a great job. He brought out a lot of the, you know, he was really, it was like really like calm, sophisticated, you know. It was really like like basically. And then this movie's based on a long Halloween. Whether you want to admit that or not, it is. Um, and then to see him gradually, you know, get more and more and more angry and all that until the culmination where he actually becomes two face, you know, get totally freaks out and shit. You know what I mean? It's just it's to me like the. You saw an evolution of the character go from 
calm, normal district attorney, you know, brand new, you know, fresh clean to this crazy homicidal split personality being. While I was with the Joker, you just saw basically one angle to him. And the whole angle was he was crazy. He's crazy from the first scene. He was crazy all the way till the end. So there was no development really in that sense. He still played a good Joker. The Joker was still cool and awesome to see, don't get me wrong. I just find that for me, when I saw Spider-Man 2, it just, it, it, it was just better. And that's, that's, that's all I can say, it was better. Uh, I saw Spider-Man 2, what was it, six or seven times in a theater, and I only saw Batman twice. So, I mean, maybe it's a sign of the economic times. But if I really like a movie, I can't stop going out to see it. So, I mean, for me, I guess, and it is Spider-Man 2, it's my favorite comic book movie of all time. Some people will disagree, but if you disagree, go back, watch it again, and uh, and then then let me know what you think. Yeah. So we are probably around the 10 minute mark here of this video. Can you believe it? Already 10 minutes. I did what? One, two, three, four. Four questions. 10 minutes. That is the mark of somebody who talks too much. So maybe I ramble. I think I ramble too much. Maybe I do. I don't know. I just like to get out there and uh, give the best answer that I can, I guess. So we're going to call it quits for this video for now. Uh, I will film part two and get through the rest of the questions because sometimes I let some questions fall off and all that and I feel kind of bad. People take the time to write in and please keep writing in. You can write in via my website at www.askhemanything.com. Uh, continue writing in. And I'll do my best to answer the most questions that I can, as I always do. So until next time, until part two of this Ask Kev Anything, take care, guys. Later.